Lucy joined the company in 1991 and um, rose very quickly through the ranks. In fact, she was promoted to Corifei in 92, soloist in 93, senior artist in 95, and then principal artist in 2002. And I must say, I had the great pleasure of being the artistic director that promoted Lucy to principal artist in um, 2002. So let's welcome her to the um, stool. So Lucinda. It's been an incredible journey this last 23 years at the Australian Ballet, but I thought it would be interesting to start at the beginning. Tell us what it was like to be young Lucinda Dunn, um, growing up in Sydney and um, thinking, I want to be a ballerina. Um, it's probably around the age of 13, um, two dancing schools combined, the Je Janice Graham at the time and Tanya Pearson had merged schools still in, in Belrose. Um, and Tanya Pearson um, found some potential in me and decided that ballet was a career that I really could make a go of it and I really wasn't so sure. Um, and I entered the Prix de Lausanne competition when I was 15 um, and I won a scholarship um, to the Royal Ballet School and that's really where the tables turned completely. I was the only Australian to reach the finals um, and I think the youngest in the competition and was awarded a scholarship. But my first year there, um, within a few months, um, I was diagnosed with a stress fracture in my spine, which meant that I was encased in a plaster cast from my armpits to my hip bones, um, 12 weeks and three hours. <laughs> Not that you were counting. I was, it was, it was pretty tragic. I was on a full scholarship and my family had moved with me and I was in this case, like, one of those big giant concrete things that you see on work sites. Um, and it really was to immobilise me because I couldn't do anything. But I, I continued studying and I was in at the school every day watching. And you talked about highs and about those performances where you go home and say, yes, that was the absolute best that I can do. Do you have any that come to top of mind now that were the performances of your career? There's the great story of Tokyo. Um, this season of Tokyo that was after the ballet festival in 2007. And my husband calls it as just being in the zone. Um, and I seem to work better when I'm absolutely exhausted um, and just think I'm, I'm so tired and I don't know how I'm gonna pull this out. And then I think the energy level's slightly lower or my mental capacity is like, okay, just minute by minute. It doesn't have to be sort of three hours see you at the end of act three. Um, but it, it was a special show. I, I felt like my technique was right underneath me or I was on top of it and I felt like I could enjoy and flourish and excel in, in that particular performance. And I know in circles of, of the company um, from dancers and um, David remembers too that um, it was I can, memorable. I can tell you, Lucinda came on and did the rosadage and from then on I think she literally dragged the whole company with her in this performance and it finished to be one of the most exciting Sleeping Beauty performances we'd ever given. So it, it was totally on her shoulders and in her point shoes that that performance raised to that level. And it's the same sort of thing that people talk about when Fontaine did that um, Aurora in New York in the 1940s. It just, you know, lifted the whole company and that's exactly what happened in Tokyo. It was extraordinary. 